we finished up. Uh, we finished up last week. Uh, sorry, not last week. Last time, uh, talking about the non-inverting op amp. So we uh, analyzed this circuit, found the gain. Oops. Found the gain, and that is one plus. R2 over R1. So magnitude is similar to that of the inverting configuration, um, but the output is in phase with the input. So it doesn't invert the signal. Uh, then we looked at gain stability, and we said that the input resistance is infinite and the output resistance is zero. So our uh, non-inverting configuration uh, should function as a very good voltage amplifier, ideally. So let's look at uh, the non-ideal case again, where we don't have, we uh, are assuming that the open loop gain is finite, so it's not infinite anymore. And if you want to write the gain equation for that, it looks like this. So again, just like with the inverting amplifier, I have A in a term in uh, the denominator. And if A goes to infinity, then my gain becomes my ideal gain once again. Okay, so the way that you derive this is similar to the derivation that we did for the inverting amplifier and that will eventually be uh, on your homework. So you have to just follow a similar process. Okay, um, now let's look at a special case of the uh, non-inverting op amp. And that is called um, a voltage follower. This is also an example of a buffer amplifier, which is an amplifier that does not actually amplify. So it's, the gain is somewhere around 1. But what the, the function of the buffer amplifier uh, has is it has a high uh, input impedance and a low uh, output impedance. So if I had uh, a voltage source that had a high internal impedance and I have a very low impedance load, I can put that buffer amplifier there and I'll, the source will be much better matched to load and I'll be able to deliver more voltage from my source to my load uh, than if I didn't have that buffer amplifier. So we looked at that, you know, with cases like if I had a circuit like this. So I have, this is my source resistance, and this is high, let's say, I don't know, it's one kilo ohm. And I connect that source directly up to a low uh, load resistance. So say my load resistance is, I don't know, 10 ohms. Then I'm not getting, getting very much of this voltage transferred to the load. So I can get a significant increase in this output voltage if I put in a buffer amplifier, which has a high input resistance. So all of uh, the VS gets transferred to the input of the amplifier and a very low output resistance so everything at the output of the amplifier uh, gets transferred to the load. Even if I don't have any gain, if I put that buffer amplifier in between my source and my load in this circuit in the top, then I'll have a much better, uh, a much larger voltage across my load resistance. And so we can use a non-inverting uh, op amp to realize a buffer amplifier. So in this case, the feedback uh, 
network of this is just a wire connecting the output of the op amp back to the inverting input and the um, uh, voltage is still going in the input voltage is still going in to the uh, non-inverting input and if I want to make an amplifier model of this I'll use the voltage amplifier model and it looks something like this there used to be a resistance over here but because my uh, input voltage is going directly into an input of the op amp I have no current going into the op amp and so this is infinite so just take it out of that voltage of the voltage amplifier model um, the gain of this amplifier happens to be 1 and the output resistance since I'm looking at the output resistance of a non-inverting amplifier is 0 okay so there's no resistor here there, should, there used to be a resistor here but that output resistance is 0 so you just it's just drawn as a short circuit in your notes okay and let's in uh, using this model if I want to write an equation for the output voltage so that's the voltage across these terminals it will be the same thing as the voltage across the uh, dependent source and it's just one times vi so the output voltage is equal to the input voltage that's why it's called this configuration is called a voltage follower because the output just follows whatever is on the input. Okay, so let's prove that uh, the output voltage equals to VI uh, based upon what we know about our op amps. Okay, so we'll start with this equation. Um, and that equation is from the ideal model of the op amp and I need to write some other things down too so what is V2 equal to? V2 is the voltage at this point in the circuit. So I can write V2 is equal to some other, something else too. VI. Because that's at the same point. Because I don't want to write this in terms of, of V2 and V1. I want to write it in terms of output voltage and VI. Okay, so V2 is equal to VI. And what is V1 equal to? V1 is equal to V out because I have directly connected that uh, to the output. Okay, so if I make all those substitutions, oops, this is so I just substituted VI is equal to V2 and uh, V1 is equal to V out. You do some algebra, you get out you get this equation. And now because A goes to infinity, uh, the right hand side of the equation goes to zero. So I get uh, V out equals VI. So that matches what I had here. This also checks out because remember we have that virtual short condition. Uh, so, so just according to the virtual short,
v1 has to equal v2. And we said v1 is v0 and v2 is vi. So also according to the virtual short, I should get my output voltage is equal to my input voltage. Okay, so we, we, we have verified that the output is equal to the input voltage two different ways. Okay, so let's um, let's talk about how to implement uh, a buffer amplifier. Let me make a blank slide so I can draw stuff. Okay, so let's go back to that conceptual examples. Okay, so I have uh, what did I say it was? One kilo ohm. Okay, this represents my source. That's my power supply or function generator, whatever signal I want to amplify. Okay, and I want to uh, deliver some signal to my load. And my load happens to be a 10 ohm resistor. And I'll get some voltage across that. Okay, if I directly connect up my resistor to my source, what's the output voltage going to be? Yeah, VS, it's a voltage divider. So that's, it'll be this. Let's uh, make it in terms of gain. So it'll be 10 ohms. So I'm just dividing the left-hand side, both, both sides by Vs. 10 ohms plus 1K. That's approximately equal to 10 over 1,000. So I have a hundredth of the voltage at the output that I did at Vs. Now, um, if I don't do that, and I just put in my buffer amplifier, so is ground. Okay, so this is my buffer amplifier. The gain of my buffer amplifier is only going to be one. But the input resistance to my buffer amplifier is infinite and the output resistance of my buffer amplifier is zero okay so now let's express what the output voltage is okay so what's the equation for the output voltage here let's call this the input voltage bi here Okay, so because my, my gain is 1, my output voltage should be equal to the voltage at the input of the buffer amplifier. And because my input resistance into my buffer amplifier is infinite, there's no current going into my amplifier. So there's no voltage dropped across this 1 kilo ohm resistor. 
So the input voltage here has to be equal to Vs. Okay, so that, so that means the output voltage is equal to Vs. So if I express this in terms of gain, the gain of the whole thing is 1. But that's, even though I don't have any gain in my amplifier, that's already 100 times better than what it was in the original circuit on the top. And so maybe now you have enough voltage to drive your load, even though you, don't, you didn't add any gain to the circuit. All you did was make it so that uh, your low impedance load sees an even lower impedance at the output of the buffer amplifier, and your high impedance source sees an even, even higher impedance going into the, the buffer amplifier. So you're doing some, you're, you're matching the, the load and the source better using the buffer amplifier. Is that a little bit more clear on why we're using the buffer amplifier? Uh, it's dependent source. Okay, so that that dependent source uh, goes back to goes back to this uh, model of what's going on in the op amp, and this model of what's going on in the op amp is a uh, equivalent circuit for how this behaves. How this everything in this schematic behaves. Okay, so the dependent source is still kind of magic right now. Um, what we're what we're trying to do when we when we study all these amplifiers is we're trying to take uh, a circuit that looks like this, and we're trying to simplify it to a circuit that looks like a circuit that you have solved in 2.11. That's what we're, we're just going to keep on doing uh, when we when we look at different types of amplifiers. So the, the point of this course is is knowing uh, how to how to go from something like this to a circuit that's like a 2.11 circuit and then you just use the same circuit analysis methods that you did in 2.11. So that's, that's what this is here. Um, this drawing just shows uh, what's inside of the op amp in terms of an equivalent circuit. And if you wanted to make it entirely into an equivalent circuit, that's this voltage amplifier model on the right. Any other questions? Okay. Let's go through some uh, examples uh, of up amp uh, circuits. Okay, so for given this op amp circuit, and assuming that our op amp is ideal, I want to find all of these values. So V1, the voltage at this point, I1, this current, I2, this current, uh, the output voltage, the load current, the, the current coming out of the op amp and voltage, current, and power gains. Okay, so first, the first thing to do when we uh, tackle this kind of problem is to ask ourselves what uh, kind of configuration is this op amp circuit? Okay, so this is the inverting op amp. And since I know that, then I know what the equation is for the output voltage, which is what's the equation for the output voltage for an inverting op amp? Negative what? Negative R2 over R1 times the input voltage. Okay, you you could 
you know, not recognize that it's inverting and then do circuit analysis and figure out, resolve this equation. But you don't want to do that every single time you see an off-amp circuit. You want to recognize what it is, and then you already have an equation down that you can apply onto that circuit. Okay, so it's going to be, we have numbers now. So 20 kilo ohms for R2, 1 kilo ohm for R1, and my input voltage is half a volt. So my output voltage is going to be negative 10 volts. So solve that. Okay, so we still need to solve um, everything else, though. Okay. What else can we solve for? So we solve for the output voltage. What else can we solve for that we just know without having to do any calculations? V1. So what is V1? Why is V1 zero? Okay, so V1 is zero because of the virtual short between these two terminals, and since uh, the non-inverting terminal is grounded, that means V1 should be zero volts. Okay, what else do we know? Or what other relationships can I write down? I'm not doing any calculations yet. Uh, how about I2 and I1? What do we know about I2 and I1? They're equal to each other. Because if I do KCL at this node, labeled uh, V1, there's no current going into the inverting terminal of the op amp. So the current entering the node, which is I1, should be equal to the current leaving the node, which is I2. Okay, so I know that I2 and I1 are equal to each other, so let me just solve for one of them. Okay, so let's write an equation to solve for I1. What's my equation? Uh, let's write, uh, let me write it in, in the symbolic terms first. Okay, so the voltage at this side of R1 minus the voltage at the other side, which is V1, over R1. Okay, and that's 0 0.5 volts. V1 we said was 0 volts, and R1 is 1K. Okay, so I1 is half a milliamp. So we can check that off. And I2 is equal to I1, so I2 is also half a milliamp. So we can check that off. Okay, let's solve for uh, the load current next. So what's my equation for the load current IO? The output voltage divided by uh, the one kilo ohm resistor. And we said the output voltage was negative 10 volts. So that is negative 10 lamps. Keep on losing my check marks. Okay. Then what is I naught, which is the current that's coming out of the op amp? So we're going to do a KCL at this point. So I naught is equal to IL minus I2. 
which is equal to negative 10 milliamps minus half a milliamp. So negative 10.5 milliamps. Any questions so far? Okay, now we need to solve for the gain terms. So let's write our voltage gain V out over VI and that is negative 10 volts for our output voltage and our input voltage is half a volt. So that's negative 20. You can leave it unitless or you can write volts per volt. And for the current gain, that's going to be the load current divided by the input current, which is I1. So the load current is negative 10 milliamps. I1 was half a milliamp. So that is also negative 20. And you can leave it unitless or write amps per amp. Okay, then we can solve for the power gain, which is just the voltage gain times the current gain, so negative 20 volts per volt, negative 20 amps per amp, so 400, and again this is unit list so you can write watts per watt. Any questions with this example? Okay, if not, let's move on to a second example. Okay, this is a uh, slightly different um, op amp circuit. And for this op amp circuit, we can model it using our trans resistance amplifier model. So in order to do that, let's find out the parameters that we need to make our trans resistance model. So we need to know RI, uh, the input resistance, the trans resistance term, RM, and the output resistance. Okay, so let's find our trans resistance term first. And that was defined as the output voltage divided by the input current uh, given an open circuit at the output. Okay, this is just our definition from the trans resistance amplifier model. Okay, so what is our uh, what is the equation going to be for our output voltage? Uh, maybe before that. What would help is if I assign a value uh, to this voltage VI. What's the value of that voltage? Zero, because of the virtual short between this terminal and this terminal, and this non inverting terminal is grounded. Okay, so this is zero volts. 
because of the virtual short. Okay, so now if I know that this point in the circuit is zero volts, uh, let's write an equation for the output voltage. So the output voltage is the voltage from this point in the circuit to ground to zero volts. So it's the same as the voltage across this 10 kilo ohm resistor. Now let's call this R. But only if the polarity of that voltage is going to be that way, right? This is, that's V0. The positive uh, part of V0 is at this point in the circuit. The negative side of V0 is at the ground potential, which is this point in the circuit as well. Okay, so what's my equation for the output voltage going to be in terms of R and II? It's II times R. Is this the right polarity though? There should be a negative sign here because my, my current is going to the negative terminal first. Okay, so in order to get RM, it's just V naught oops over II. When my when I don't have any output voltage, sorry, output yeah, output current. So my my output terminal is left open. And that's what that's what we have in this circuit here. So I can just write that this is, oops, this is a transformation of the equation right above it. So this is negative R, and R is 10 kilo ohms. So my trans-resistance term uh, for the trans-resistance amplifier is negative 10 kilo ohms. Any questions on this? Okay. Now let's find the input resistance. So the input resistance is going to be the voltage at the input divided by the current. And the voltage at the input was zero volts. So it doesn't matter what the current is. The input resistance will be zero. And for R not. That's looking that way. We can just say that's zero by inspection because that's the same thing that we've said for both the uh, inverting and non-inverting configurations. It's an it's a property of the ideal op amp. Okay, um, that's the amplifier by itself. So we've, we've converted this to the uh, trans-resistance amplifier model. And now let's look at uh, what happens when we connect a, a source. Okay, so we're going to connect up a current source with a finite source resistance. Here's my source, and 
equivalent way of drawing our, our top circuit is to convert uh, entirely to our trans resistance amplifier model. So let me draw the op amp uh, as our trans resistance amplifier model. Okay, so this in the box is modeled by that circuit in the box in our in our lower schematic. Okay, and we're going to connect up a, a current source with some source resistance, and now I want to know what the output voltage is going to be. So it's going to be RM times the input current, but we said RM was negative R, that's this R. So that's negative 10 kilo ohms. And what's the input current II going to be? What's this current here? This is half a milliamp. So II is also half a milliamp because this is a short right here. So it's not going to want to go through the path of the resistor. It's just going to follow the short circuit. Or if you want, you can look at uh, what I'm circling here as a current divider. So according to the current divider equation, what should II be? It's going to be the resistance in the other branch divided by the total resistance times my current source. So this is one. So you could also use the current divider equation to figure out what we just said, but you should recognize that if you have a short, the current's going to go that way instead of through any finite resistance. Okay, so our output voltage will be 5 volts. Any questions on this example? Yes. Oh yeah, negative 5 volts. Okay, if not, let's go to another example. Okay, let's find the output voltage for this circuit. So what kind of op amp circuit is this now? Uh, I don't know, we, we haven't seen this exact configuration. Well, what does it look like? 
let's let's ignore these. Ignore these for now. And let's just say I gave you that. What what configuration is that? That's a non-inverting. So I can say that this is a, a non-inverting configuration. If I ignore V1 and V2 for now, and I would just say that um, if I only look at this voltage V plus, so if I only look at that voltage V plus, I can write that my output voltage is, let's call this R2 again, and R1 is R2 over R1 times V plus. That's, that's still fine. So my output voltage is 1 plus 9 kilo ohms for 1 kilo ohm times V plus. 10 times V plus. Okay, I know that much so far just because of uh, by recognizing that that was a, a non-inverting configuration, if I only looked at V plus. Okay, but now I'm going to go back to the the circuit that has V1 and V2 and resistors connected to that node. Okay, so now what kind of circuit analysis should I use from this point? Superposition. Because I have two sources here, so I'm just going to turn on one of them at a time and see what happens at the output. Okay, so let's first uh, turn off source 2. And so we do that by uh, shorting out the voltage source. So that goes to ground. And let me write an equation for what V plus is. I only care what V plus is now at this point because I already have an equation that equates uh, V plus um, to V out. So what's V plus going to be? In terms of V1. Maybe let's draw it a different way. There's V1. Oops. This is the 2 kilo ohm resistor. This is the 3 kilo ohm resistor. And this is V plus. So what's my equation for V plus in terms of V1? What kind of circuit is this? Voltage divider. So it'll be 3 kilo ohms over the total resistance times V1. That's 0 0.6 times V1. And I know my output voltage due to V1 is 10 times the voltage at V plus, which is 0.6 V1. So it's 6 V1. If I only have uh, voltage source 1 turned on. Okay, now we're going to reverse, or not reverse, but do the, the opposite. And we are going to short out V1 and open up the V2. Okay, so V2 is on and V1 is off. Now what is the voltage V plus in terms of V2? Sorry? Uh, 0.4 V2. Yeah, so how did you get that? What's the top term? What's the term in the numerator? 
So two kilo ohms. The bottom stays the same. So we have another voltage divider, and this is times uh, V2. So this is 0.4 V2. And so my output due to V2 is 10 times 0.4 V2. Or 4 V2. Okay, and then my superposition, I'm just adding up all the contributions uh, of my sources. So my output voltage will be 6 V1 plus 4 V2. <clears throat> so this is another way to make a, a summing circuit. Any questions on this? Okay, I'm going to end here for today. Uh, don't forget on Friday uh, we'll go over the answers to the uh, practice exam.